All right, we're continuing with our study of who we are and answering the question, who am I? We talked so far about who we are from creation, how God created us. And Adam and Eve were created and each one of us are created as creatures. God is the creator, we are the creature. Uh, we are subjects, God is the king and we are under his authority. And finally, we looked at last time that we are image bearers. We are created in God's image. And that gives us value and that gives us purpose and that tells us what our job is. But sadly, after God created Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve chose to reject what God created them to be. And now we're going to be looking at what we are because of Adam and Eve and everyone since then, because of our rejection of what God created us to be, because we decided we didn't want to be subjects. We didn't want to be creatures. We didn't want to be image bearers. Ever since Adam and Eve, we have become some other things. And now we're going to be looking at those things. So the first thing we're going to be looking at today is because of that decision to reject what God created us to be. The first thing we're going to see is that we are dead. We are dead. We're going to look at several different passages. First of all, not on the screen is Romans 5, verse 12, and it says, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sin. Ephesians 2, 1, you can see on the screen there, it says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. So even from the minute we are conceived in our mother's womb, we are dead. We are born dead. What does that mean? Well, we're dead in three different ways. First of all, Romans 8, 6 through 8 says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. We are enemies with God, for it is not subject to the law of God. We don't want to be subjects like we were created to be. We don't want to let God be our king. Neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. In our natural states, we are born enemies of God. We are born in the flesh. And unless the spirit changes us, we cannot please God. We do not want to please God. And we're not able to please God because we're dead. Hebrews 9.27 says, not only are we separated from God and spiritually dead so that we don't want to and we can't do what God wants us to do, but Hebrews 9.27 says, because of that, it is appointed unto men once to die and after this the judgment. We're spiritually dead, but we're also physically dead. One day, each one of us, we're all dying. And one day, unless Christ returns first, all of us will physically die die our souls will be separated from our bodies and our bodies will decay and disintegrate and finally revelation 20 says there is not just the spiritual death and the physical death but there's what we call the second death and it says when christ returns he will judge the earth and it says in death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire this is the ultimate final second death. So what? What does this mean for us? Well, first of all, it means that naturally from conception, we are separated from God from birth and do not have the ability or desire to please him. Again, we already read Romans 8 and it says there that those that are in the flesh are not subject to the law of God. They don't want to obey God. And it says there that, in fact, they cannot please God. In our natural state, from birth, we are separated from God. Because of Adam's sin, we are born in sin. We're separated from God from birth. In our entire life, we may show by our choices that we are sinners, that we do not want to please God. And in fact, Unless God intervenes in our hearts and lives, we can't please him. We are dead spiritually. But not only are we dead spiritually from birth, but because we are dead spiritually, 
one day we will die physically. Um, when it, Adam sinned and separated himself from God, God said that the punishment of that sin was death. And every single person since Adam was born in sin, was born spiritually dead. And because of that, we're all born under Adam's curse and we all will die physically. No one can escape death. Science will never come up with a solution to death. And then finally, apart from Christ, because of our sin, because of Adam's sin, because we're born dead and we're separated from God and we cannot and do not want to please God, we not only will be separated our soul from our body and our body will decay physically, but one day when Christ returns, he will reunite our physical body with our soul. And all of those that were that died spiritually separated from God will receive what we deserve and will be cast into the lake of fire forever separated from God for all eternity in a horrible place of torment apart from everything that is good and enjoyable in the lake of fire. Now, this is a very sobering thing. It's not something we enjoy talking about, but it is something that is true of all of us from birth. And we have to understand that in order to understand how we can fix that. And in the coming days, we'll talk about what else is wrong with us and then also how we can be freed from that and how we can become again what God originally intended for us to become. We see that not only are we creatures, not only are we subjects, not only are we image bearers, but from birth, naturally in our flesh, we are dead. Spiritually unable to please God, separated from relationship with him, not wanting to please him. Physically, our bodies are dying and decaying until one day we will physically die. And, and then finally, unless something happens, we will all be sent to an eternal second death, separated from God forever in a terrible place called the Lake of Fire. Next time, we'll continue seeing who we are because of sin, and then finally, what we can become in Christ.